today on my kiss collection kiss the solo albums i've received a lot of requests for this there's a lot of information in this video today so hang tight here we go let's face it in 1977 kiss was without a doubt the biggest and loudest rock band in the world they had been releasing records for six years at this point. None of us could imagine the craziness that was Kiss Mania. Making records, selling merch, putting on makeup and costumes every night, endless radio shows, photo shoots, autograph signings. This was at their commercial peak in 1977. The stress of non-stop touring was taking a toll. It was time to give the guys some time off for a little creative freedom. Casablanca already had LPs in the contracts for the guys. So if they wanted to do a solo record, they would have to do it under the KISS branding. This was a smart play for Casablanca. They would make a fortune. This would be the largest and most over-the-top record release party in the history of rock and roll. How do you feel about that after all these years of being a comic book fan, having one of the biggest selling Marvel comics of all time? Well, I mean, to say that it's a dream come true is, uh, is a little bit playing it down. I think maybe KISS fans are a special breed of people. I think they're not afraid to go against the stream of things. Yes, yes, Gene, indeed, I would agree. Okay, up first, an original first pressing of Gene Simmons' solo record. This is part of a complete collection of solo LPs that I bought together from the local record shop. It comes with all the goodies. Everything about this copy is in excellent condition. Here we have the Gene merch form in the red color. Join the ranks of the KISS Army, only for five bucks. Enlist now. The whole envelope and the form are in great condition. This one has the red coloring to match the rest of the LP. You had to be one disciplined kid not to destroy this stuff. This copy had a photo of Gene from the Love Gun tour in it. It comes with the film work label with a KISS logo in white with the Gene portrait on the front. This copy wouldn't be complete without the Jigsaw puzzle poster in fantastic condition. Never stapled to anybody's wall. No tags and scotch tape on this one. Make no mistake about it. These solo records are not KISS albums. They truly are private pieces of work by the band with the KISS branding. It's genius. The KISS marketing machine marches on. I was never crazy about this record. It is indeed the most diverse one out of all the other LPs. It has a little bit of pop, a little bit of rock, some funk, and even some strings and things. He didn't even play bass on it. He hired some heavy players on it to add to the buzz. The LP reached number 22 on the Billboard album 200 charts, outpacing all the other LPs by Paul, Peter, and Ace. Up next, a for radio only promo copy, released on September 18th, 1978. I bought this at the local record shop. I didn't even look to see if it was a promo, but it was a nice surprise when I got home to say the least. The LP is in good condition, with the Filmworks label, and the for promotional use only stamp, with the picture of Gene on the label. Here on the back of the LP, we have the for radio only promotional gold stamp. This jacket and LP looks like it spent a little bit of time having some radio play. But that's okay, it's still a great LP for my collection. The credits on the back of this LP are massive. A lot of heavyweights in the business made this album happen. Okay, that does it for Gene, let's move on. I think it's a lot more thrilling to know that there's a real Superman than to see something that's put together for movies. I think we represent um, freedom. Okay, here we go, up next, Paul Stanley's solo record, released on September 18th, 1978. This copy is in fantastic shape. Comes with all the goodies. The inner sleeve is in perfect condition. This one also has a picture of Paul from the Love Gun Tour. It includes the Enlist Now merch form with the purple color branding to match the LP. It's amazing how well kept this copy is. It's shipped with the Filmworks label with the portrait of Paul's front cover artwork and the White Kiss logo. Of course, this kit wouldn't be complete without the puzzle poster. And this one looks fantastic. No tax or tapes on this one. I love this record. In true Paul fashion, the LP is the more Kiss sounding album than the other solo records by the band. He was the main producer on the album, and the music is honest, and it rocks. There's some ballad stuff going on, and I like it. It is the only release out of the four Kiss solo albums to feature all original songs. He enlisted over 12 different musicians to join in and play on the record, Bob Gulick being one of them. This is a Japanese copy. I got it pretty cheap. It is, however, missing the poster and the OBI sash which is unfortunate, but I only paid 20 bucks for it. It's in decent shape and plays well. It's shipped with the poly half moon sleeve, which I immediately replaced with a poly rice paper sleeve. If the original inner sleeves are clean and free of mold, I always keep them. You can just slip them inside the jacket for safekeeping. 
It has the Filmworks label with the Victor branding in a matte finish with the KISS logo and Paul Stanley's name in white print. It includes the four-page booklet featuring pictures of Paul and of course the lyrics written in Japanese and English. The rear cover features white print instead of the matching purple color found on other imports. The portrait inner sleeve is in excellent condition. Here you can see the difference in print quality from the Japanese copy to the American copy. Japan usually ships their albums with half moon sleeves and keeps the original inner sleeve clean to avoid any unnecessary damage. As I've said in some of my other videos, you will pay a premium for Japanese records. I should have bought a complete kit in the first place, but the prices are running pretty high on these right now. There seems to be a watermark here. I'm not sure if somebody spilled a drink on it, but the record is clean and free of mold. Okay, moving on. This is Peter Chris's solo album part of the same collection I bought at the local record shop. And indeed, it has all the goodies inside. It has a super clean merch form and the matching green color to match the LP. I just love these merch forms, and it's really great that they're intact. This one is in great shape. No one ever did this before, and I'm not sure that any band has ever done it since. Join the ranks of the KISS Army. It's shipped with the Filmworks label, with Peter's portrait painting on the label, and the Peter Chris and KISS logo in white print. It came with a photo of Peter from the Love Gun Tour. I have this clipping from the 1977 tour booklet, which is the same picture the artist used to paint the pictures on all of the solo LPs. The record had too many credits to list on the back of the LP, so this one has its own credit sheet with all the info on the folks involved. And you guessed it, a mint copy of the puzzle poster. No tape attacks on this one either. I don't think it had ever been unfolded, not at least until I got it. I was eight years old when this album was released. I couldn't quite understand it that well. Like a lot of KISS fans, I've grown to love this album the older I got. As I grew and matured a bit, this record became brand new over the years. It's a fantastic record. Good job, Peter. This is another original 1978 Santa Maria pressing. It has the new old stock notch, and it comes with all the goodies. The jacket is in amazing shape, with just a few creases. It's shipped with the Filmworks label, with the portrait of Peter, and the KISS logo in white print. The merch form is nice but it is missing the envelope portion. The poster are free of tax and tapes. Of course, I saved the best for last. And according to my polls out there, this seems to be the favorite of all the solo LPs from everyone. It just plain brings the rock. Ace gives and shares with us the absolute rock. He enlisted an Australian drummer named Anton Fig, the best. This album influenced my drumming for years to come. If you're a drummer, this is a must have album. The music is true to Ace, honest and loud, it has a perfect merch form. Join the ranks of the KISS Army. The envelope is clean and free of mold. They made a fortune on all this merch, and it was genius. If you're into KISS collectibles, this swag is very pricey, especially if it's from the Bill Coin era. And a photo of the Love Gun Tour. It shipped with the Filmworks label, including the portrait, painting, and the ace title in white print. Of course, it wouldn't be complete without the puzzle poster. No tax and tapes on this one either. Okay, I promise, I'm almost done. This is a radio-only promo compilation. There are a bunch of these in the market that look better than this copy, but that's okay. I bought it a long time ago. It has definitely seen some radio play. The LP is in excellent condition, and the wear and tear on the cover is cool by me. It tells the story of this little piece of vinyl. It shipped with the Filmworks label with the DJ-only promo stamp. I shot this video on 8K just to give it a run, see what it looks like. And boy, can you really see the nooks and crannies in this jacket. I found this cool magazine clipping in excellent shape just to add to the collection for safekeeping. Uh, rock and roll for the people. It's all right. It makes everybody happy. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to be somebody. <laughs> okay, time to show you the picture discs. Gene Simmons picture disc pressed by the Lilith Records Company out of Russia. This is in like new condition. It comes with a heavyweight plastic in a sleeve with the cutout jacket promoting the other solo LPs. I don't usually get too crazy about picture discs. They generally just don't sound good. But how can you not have them in your collection? This is a 1978 Casablanca copy. These are hard to find in this condition, especially a 1978 version. There are many Kiss picture discs out there in the market right now, so check to see what it is before you buy it. I have Russian copies that were made in 2006, and there is a bunch of these in the market right now. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're not 1978 versions. It comes in a cutout jacket, which displays the LP in all its glory. This one has a poly half moon sleeve as well, which I immediately replaced with a disc keeper sleeve by Sleeve City. 
This one has dual sided rice paper sleeves. This one has the new old stock corner cutout. The best way to know if you're getting an original Casablanca copy is with this print at the bottom of the cover with a sound quality warning. The Kiss marketing machine matches on. Okay, another picture disc. This is brandy new. It was made in 2006 by a Russian reissue record labeled called Lilith Records. They specialized in making 180 gram reissues for the Western market. Universal Music still uses the Czech Republic for Kiss LPs, as you've seen in my Destroyer video. However, those newer copies do not have the Lilith name, and they sound better than the original picture disc from 1978. I will still be on the lookout for 1978 version since I only have Paul's. It's shipped with a nice heavyweight plastic sleeve, Time to put this in an archival rice paper sleeve. This LP will never get played, so I'm gonna wrap up all the parts in their own plastic for safekeeping. Put it on the shelf and sell it with my collection when I get old. Okay, so here's the same deal. Ace Frehley picture disc by the Lilith Record Company, made in 2006. I found this 1978 merch form online. I bought it and I threw it in here with this one just for the collection. In 180 gram vinyl, it's a nice package. It has the jacket cutout with the portraits of the other solo LPs, just in case you forgot to buy those too. The Kiss Marketing Machine matches on. This is really a huge feat for any band to pull off, but Casablanca and Kiss did it right. Thanks for watching, and thank you for all the positive feedback. This is my Kiss Collection. Take it easy.